Planning a trip to Nice? Excellent choice! Take your time to explore this Mediterranean beauty. But if you're eager to see more of the French Riviera, we've got five fantastic day trips for you. Cannes, Monaco, Aise, Saint-Paul-de-Vence and Saint-Jean-Cap-Ferrat. Experience a mix of city life, village vibes and breathtaking scenery. Let's take a look at each of the destinations and how to get there. We often get questions about which cities to explore beyond Nice. And it's a real head-scratcher, because each city has its own distinctive personality, as one of our friends perfectly summed it up. Choosing depends a bit on what you're looking for. Then again, Cannes and Monaco are the most renowned places besides Nice, so we'd say make sure to go see those two. Let's begin with Cannes. Cannes is Nice's biggest rival on the Côte d'Azur when it comes to which city is most popular with tourists from all over the world. The festival city is very different from the capital of our département. And it's not just the size that sets them apart. So, Cannes has its very posh sides, more so than Nice. And if you're into luxury hotels and high fashion, you've found your spot. But it's not all high-end glamour. Cannes can be surprisingly down-to-earth. No matter your budget, you're in for a fantastic time in Cannes, where, much like in Nice, you can enjoy the outdoors all year round. Cannes is all about its beaches, and above all, the stunning promenade, the so-called croisette. For a little over a kilometer, you can walk along the sandy beach, below palm trees and umbrella pines, while on the other side of the road, luxury hotels and luxury boutiques take turns. Anya's and my favorite way to enjoy Cannes is to grab a coffee at one of the many beachfront restaurants, soaking up the sun and savoring the sea view. Right next to the beach lies the renowned Palais des Festivals, hosting the celebrated film festival in May, as well as Cannes series, and the huge house music party, Plage Electronique, right on the beach, and many more exciting events throughout the year. Check out the handprints of dozens of movie stars who've been to Cannes. You should also walk past the newly rebuilt Allée de la Liberté, with its fountains, bull players, and cafes, in order to get to the old town called Le Suquet. It may require a little bit of a climb, but the panoramic view of the city you get from up here is absolutely worth the effort. Cannes is also great for shopping, catering to all tastes, whether you're into top-notch brands or regular stores. Here you can get it all. And if you're in the mood for a boat trip with a view of Cannes skyline from the sea, hop on a ferry to one of the small islands, Sainte Marguerite or Sainte Honora. Just 20 minutes away from the coastal hustle and bustle, you'll be amazed at the tranquility here. The islands are great for swimming, sunbathing, leisurely walks in the shade, <laughs> or simply enjoying a meal surrounded by nothing but nature. To find out much more about the beautiful city of Cannes, check out our video highlighting the top 10 things to do there. Either you love it or you hate it, but you just have to see Monaco. This is our second destination we'd like to present to you. Here, skyscrapers clash with stunning scenery, where mountains plunge into the sea. Monaco is akin to a medium-sized city, home to a handful of native Monegasques and a much bigger community of international residents who bring business and wealth to this unique country. The Principality of Monaco is a place for the rich and famous, yet surprisingly welcoming to visitors. It's almost like stepping into a real-life Disney world. Or well, maybe not exactly, but you get the idea. So come and see for yourself. Start your visit to the world's second tiniest country, at the Rocher, the rock that cradles the old town, including the Prince's Palace. 
You can watch the changing of the guards and explore parts of the palace where Prince Albert II and his family reside. Don't miss the view from up here, over the main harbor and the one to the other side, Port de Fontvieille. A sure way to get to see the princely family, by the way, is to visit on November 19th, the National Day. After church, they traditionally greet their people from the palace windows. While you're up on the Rocher, don't miss the cathedral, where Princess Grace, Grace Kelly, and her husband, Prince Renier, are buried. A few steps down the road, you'll find the Oceanographic Museum, which you should absolutely go see. Apart from permanent and temporary exhibitions, there are stunning aquariums with familiar and unfamiliar species of marine life from all over the world. And then there's the famous Casino Square, perfect for car spotting while sipping a coffee or cocktail in the Café de Paris. Obviously, this is also your place of choice for a little gambling. If you're into cars, there's a sweet collection, easy to reach on the main port between the old town and the casino square. It holds a nice mix of classic and race cars, spanning over a century of automotive history. Of course, Monaco has even more to offer, like a pretty little beach, new promenade, great restaurants, and not to forget, it's renowned circus festival every January. Watch our video Top 10 Things to Do in Monaco to get much more in-depth info. Among all the villages on the French Riviera, this is one of a kind. You should definitely explore as village, but be aware that at least in summer you won't be on your own. Because word has got around that it doesn't get much better than this a medieval hilltop village with a view that will take your breath away. There isn't really much to do here except for getting lost in the cute alleys and taking pictures of the amazing views and little details. Invest the 7 euros to get into the exotic garden perched at the very top of the village. You won't be disappointed. We promise you'll feel like you're in heaven, regardless of your botanical inclinations. Stop by the church and risk a glimpse inside and get at least a coffee in one of the restaurants with a view, like Chateau Esa or the Chèvre d'Or. They're both renowned for their exquisite cuisine as well, so expect to spend a few euros if you opt for a proper meal. If you take the train to Aisbord de Mer down by the sea and you like hiking, you could also walk up to the village. Philosopher Nietzsche used to do that back in the day, so the steep trail is named after him. Just avoid following his footpaths in summer. Also in summer, make sure to get to as early in the morning or late in the afternoon if you want some sort of tranquility and a parking spot. Now we are going to explore a truly classic destination once a haven for really famous painters. If you like those quaint little places off of the coast, don't skip Saint-Paul-de-Vence. Just a heads up once again, it gets pretty busy in peak season. But hey, good things are worth the crowd. We usually take friends when they're first-time visitors, and they usually want to repeat. As you wander through the medieval alleys, you can't miss the abundance of galleries showcasing diverse artworks. In the 20th century, this village was an artistic hub for legends like Picasso, Matisse and Chagall. The Colombe d'Or Hotel, a favorite haunt of these masters, still echoes their presence today. The Russian-born expressionist Marc Chagall was even buried in the cemetery facing south, just beneath the town walls. Another cool way to discover this hilltop village is by actually walking on the ramparts, with a view all the way to the sea. In addition to the art scene 
and the meticulously restored stone houses lining the narrow pedestrian streets, there's an array of inviting restaurants and cafes, infusing the village with an international charm. Discover more of those medieval hilltop villages that are so typical for the French Riviera in this video. And now it's time for one of the most beautiful places down here. Along the coast of the Côte d'Azur, there are some particularly scenic places where the super-rich often buy their homes. The various capes, such as Cap d'Antibes, Cap d'Ail or Cap Martin. They are all worth checking out, whether it's for a walk or discovering a hidden bay to enjoy the sun. Saint-Jean-Cap-Ferrat is probably the most stunning of them all, offering a variety of coastal walks and hikes tailored to your fitness level. It also offers picturesque beaches with Caribbean-like waters, like the one right beside the village of Saint-Jean, Croix des Pins. Or Paloma Beach, with its view of the opposite coastline. And then, of course, you should stop by the Villa Efrussi de Rothschild. This grand mansion was built on the highest point of the Cape around 110 years ago and later acquired by Baroness Beatrice de Rothschild, who turned it into what you see today. Including nine exceptional gardens, each with a unique theme. The French formal garden features an aquatic show every 20 minutes. Explore more of the beauty of Cap Ferrat in this video of ours, where we share insider tips including restaurant recommendations. And now we are going to provide you with some practical information as promised. And there is much more in the description below the film. Have a look. We recommend budgeting at least half a day to explore each of the five destinations we've just highlighted. Maybe a full day if you want to fully soak in the local vibes. While buses and trains connect all destinations, opting for a car, especially for the villages and Cap Ferrat, tends to be more convenient. These are our five recommendations for a day trip from Nice. If you expected something different, please leave a comment below the film. And hey, if you like collections like these, we have plenty of those in our playlist. One is called Highlights of the French Riviera, or French Riviera Highlights, I think. 